Tampa Stadium in Tampa, Florida. It's USFL action between the Tampa Bay Bandits and the Washington Federals. And look at the Southern Division standings. A loss last night by New Orleans. Tampa Bay with a win tonight to move to a tie for second place. And here comes Z and runs away in Tampa. Over is Robinson. 20. Gets a block of 25 and up over the 35-yard line, and Washington will have pretty good field position, but he might have stepped out of bounds, a little short of that, around the 31. And position, the kicker was down to get them. So now, out comes Mike Hoynes to the quarterback from the University of Minnesota. Had a fine game last week. His running back will be Billy Taylor, number 38, and Curtis Bledsoe, number 23, and Bledsoe set a court club record. The wide receivers are Mike Harris, Ricky Simmons, and of course the great Joey Walters. Tackles will be Joel Patton and Jeff Seavey. Dave Pasala, Ned Fulton, the guards. Fulton's a great one. And Brian Musselman will be the center. So Hoynes, he's set to go on first and ten, with Walters set the slot to the left side. Play action. Hoynes, he gives him to his tailback and hitting through his dead so. A little fake by Hoynes and Bledsoe stopped about the 35. Gets about three or four yards. Defensively on the four-man front for Tampa Bay is Mike Butler, the Green Bay veteran, Walter Carter, Fred Nordgren, and Mike Clark. And the linebackers, Kelly Kirchbaum in the middle, James Harrell on the left, and Alonzo Johnson on the right. The cornerbacks are Jeff George and Warren Hanna, and they're two of the strengths of that secondary. Free safety is Tim King that takes over tonight from Zach Henderson and Blaine Anderson is the strong safety. Quite a fine. Second down and seven. Hoynes C looking on second down. Off in the flat. Goes over there to one of his running backs. Bledsoe and he's thrown for loss by James Harrell. Big play by Harrell. It was a good play by Harrell because it was setting up on that screen to the right side. Had Bledsoe been able to get control of that football immediately, he could have cut back inside the blocking and had some running room. Well, look what uh, Tampa Bay has done on third down. They were having trouble with the three-man line. Look what they've done here in recent games. They really up the proficiency in stopping teams on third down. And Washington's got a big third and ten. Robinson and Taylor are the backs. They're in there to block for Hoynesy. Three wide receivers. Hoynesy fumbles the ball, and maybe Tampa Bay's got it. Let's see. Well, you know they're fighting break. that ball. Fred McAllister, middle linebacker, recovers it for Tampa Bay. What a big break, Don Hunter. It really was. They've had 31 fumbles. Ten of them they've lost. Now 32. This is the 11th. Here's the snap. The ball gets away from him. And bear in mind that Hohensee playing with that wrist, a little bit of a wrist cast and tape, and it appears as though Fred McAllister made that recovery. Big turnover early. John Reeves comes out, a hot hand, a great field position. Out of the Washington 27-yard line. Reeves got Trevelyan off to the right. And Gillespie spread right here. Reeves on first down. Going for the two, but Gillespie broken up. Ooh, in the nick of time at the goal line. Looked like it was Jeff Brown, the left cornerback, as they tried to get little Gillespie just on a straight post pattern. Great job by Jeff Brown. As Reeves drops back, they go to the post pattern to Gillespie. Jeff Brown going right with him in excellent place. Good position. And now he cuts in front of him, makes a great move. Perfect position for a defensive back. Little changeup going to Gillespie early instead of Eric Trevelyan. Second down 10 for Reeves. Reeves again looks to that. Goes out of the backfield to his fullback Boone inside the 20. And maybe a first down. It is a first down inside the 15. Then a Poon and Willie Holly. Team for the stop for Washington. But that time uh, Reeves uses wide receivers as a decoy. And Boone is a great receiver out of the backfield. Big play for Tampa Bay. Third down. Washington stepping down here. They give it to Anderson. Cutting back. Anderson scores the touchdown. Penalty flags down. So hold on. Great cut back by Gary Anderson, and he got it over the end zone. Harold Randolph was there to meet him, but penalty flags went down. Let's see what this is about. And it's against Washington. It'll be a touchdown, I think. It looks like a face mask against Washington. Now they're going to say maybe his knee hit down right short of the goal line, so it's no score, but it'll be a first down. 
This might be the shortest penalty on record. Well, about three inches. <laughs> exactly. Half the distance. That was a great cut by Anderson, and that's what he does. Tremendous quickness on his part, and he reads those blocks so well. When he saw that crack, he took that daylight and accelerated. Outstanding crowd here tonight in Tampa for this game. Tailed back as Anderson booms the fullback. First and goal just inches away. Anderson scores. take Tampa Bay long after recovering the fumble around the 25-yard line. Just a, again essential, but you can see essentially a, a normal handoff, but you can see Anderson, great jump over the top, good leaping ability. And so the Tampa Bay bandits draw early blood here. It's Washington, uh, Tampa Bay. Back deep, Eric Robinson over at the 10. So Greg Taylor's going to return it up over the 30. Going to return over the 40 and out to the 44. Even better field position this time for Washington. They got it out there in pretty good shape the first time. And then uh, came the costly turnover from where Tampa Bay went in to score. Well, here comes Hoensey now. Hoensey, who has completed over 100 passes this year for better than 1,300 yards, five touchdowns, hit a 77-yarder last week for Ricky Simmons. The rookie from Nebraska. They use three wide receivers. Bielski does in his scheme of things. Sometimes he has McDonald Oden who will come in at tight end, but for the main part, they use Ricky Simmons and Mike Harris both wide, and then they'll set Joey Walters, who probably their best weapon, in a slot die. Gives them a lot of targets done. It really does. Uh, more clubs have gone to that three wides. There is Mike Hohensey's wrist with that heavy tape having just come out of the cast and he can't move that wrist. It's not very flexible. Makes it difficult on the exchange as well as the handoffs. Well, here's the big thing right here, the snap. Here's the tailback, Billy Taylor, tries the left side. Taylor gets good uh, blocking in there, gets over the 50. Mike Clark on the stop. There's a scoring drive. Just six plays after the fumble recovery on the 27 of the Federals. About a 10-yard run there, so they're measured to see, and it looks like it will be. Good job of running by Bledsoe. Right? Just missed. Inches away. Well, you're an old quarterback, Don. You got second and inches. Go for it. Go for the down. You right? bet. Send it upfield. But I know that Dick Bielski feels, in talking with him, that he wants to keep that ball away from Tampa Bay. So he's really looking at more of a controlled type of a passing game here this evening. But a situation like this, I would expect that he would go deep and try and see if he could get a relatively easy one. Well, they might be going to Ricky Simmons. Is more of a speed blazer than Walters. Walters doesn't have the great speed, but just has runs, beautiful runs and has tremendous hands. Simmons, a 4 5 40 guy, so you know he can get downfield quick. As a matter of fact, he's taking Simmons out, and Greg Taylor's in there in his place. A little faster man. <laughs> and he's going to go for the first down. Get the Bledsoe, make sure inside the 45 before Fred Nordgren, the right tackle of Tampa Bay. Let's give you the Tampa Bay. Uh, Defense again, Butler, Carter, Nordgren, Clark in the front, linebackers Harold, Kirchbaum, and Johnson, Anna King, Anderson, and George back deep. Well, Dick Bielski, my old teammate, and an end himself, you'd have thought he'd have wanted to go deep and get that ball in the air, but he's sticking right with his game plan. He wants to control it and use as much time as possible. Well, he needs to keep the ball away, and this time he's going to put Walters way out wide. He does come in with a tight end, McDonald Oak. Formation, play action, Hoensey, Hoensey going downfield, and he threads the needle in there, and it looks like Walters may have made the grab inside the 35-yard line. Boy, there are a lot of red shirts there. That was a great throw by Hoensey. Really was a great throw. Walters coming off of the ball, changing his speed up. See him accelerate, drive him downfield, then he comes to the halt. Now, great throw by Hoensey, the ball down low. Walters adjusting. Puts the ball right in between George, the defensive corner, Jeff George, number 33, Dwayne Anderson, the strong safety. And Kurt Spahm is the middle linebacker back there, too. There's Walters on the sideline, leading the receiver in the USFL now with 51 catches. Give us to Bledsoe. Right Drives down, the right middle down. of the line inside the 30. Washington line's getting a pretty good charge there, Don. Yes, they are. Pretty good surge off that right side. Two old pros working against each other. Jeff Seavey, number 77 for Washington. 
an eight-year veteran, 31 years old, the oldest player on the squad against Mike Butler, the eight-year veteran that was originally a first-round choice of the Green Bay Packers. So in this instance, good collision up there and good movement. There you see the four-man front. The Tampa Bay now is installed, and it's really turned them around. By portions of the whole ball club. A little jumping in there. Here comes Hoyne. See, Bledsoe caught behind the line. Bledsoe thrown for loss. James Ramey came crashing in there. Six-year veteran from Kentucky. And made the stop around the 36-yard line. Oh, it looked like a little blitzing action in there by Tampa Bay. Little misdirection move as far as you'll see the counter move that way and then coming back the other way. 78 right there. That's James Ramey as nobody picked him up as he hit that gap, made the play. Watch Again, the counter step left side, 60 pulling across is Dave Pasella. But unfortunately, Ramey unblocked, comes through clean and drops it for a loss. That's third down and 12. Now here's the third down play again facing the Tampa Bay defense. They've been tough on it the last three or four ball games. Hoyancy needs a long one. And it is intercepted. Back over the 30. Here comes uh, Jeff George. Past the 50. And spun out of bounds, I think, around the 44-yard line. Jeff George. And turn over the quarter and Tampa Bay is back in Washington territory. And Jeff George picking up his second interception of the season looked like he was in the offensive huddle of the Washington Federals because he just flat cut right in front of the receiver, made an excellent play on his part, drove on the ball. There are the turnovers, two already. The first one was costly for Washington. Tampa Bay converted. 27 yards they drove to score. Now they take over at the Federals. 43, first and 10. Reeves been there with Boone and Anderson behind him. Reeves on first down, going for the distance. Down there is Gillespie. Not quite. Gillespie at the same play they ran on first down after the first fumble. Gillespie broken up that time, and this time just beyond his fingertips. Well, twice on turnovers, and Steve Spurrier figures they may be just a little bit down defensively, so he's trying to go deep and get some quick ones. Both times they attacked Jeff Brown, the corner over there. Wasn't in bad position that time on Gillespie. Gillespie, excellent speed, great, great quickness. Brown about a step or two behind him. Reeves just barely overthrowing. Well, Brown is considered by there, Steve Spurrier. Put together a winning combination here, Tampa Bay, and with young players, it's a very young offensive line. Quick fake on the inside, now he drills it over the middle, and he's got Trevillian inside the 30-yard line. E.T. makes another grab, his first one here tonight. Mike Guess, the free safety, was there to stop him, but Trevillian was wide open. Good well, read by Reeves. Big target. Fake by Reeves right here as he, as he fakes to Anderson up the middle. Trevelyan coming from right to left on a square in move, wide open in the zone. Goes up for the ball, not badly thrown, and then takes the hit. Gets a couple of people to help him back there and let him know that he's uh, going to have to earn them this evening. There's the passing figures for John Reeves since he's coming to take over the passing here for this Tampa Bay team. They've really gone wild. Larry Brodsky now is in there. He's looked good in practice. Another play action pick. Reeves going down the middle. And it's Trevelyan on a sensational catch at the 10-yard line. Ooh, unbelievable grab by Trevelyan. Upended by Mike Guess. And I'll tell you, John Reeves never saw that ball completed because Harold Randolph, the outside linebacker, was putting the pressure on him. He dusts him just as he throws the football. Little fake again, a lot of play action. Watch from the left side of your screen. There it comes, right there. Harold Randolph, boom, down. Now Trevelyan on the square in move. The ball is behind him. Great concentration, a one-handed grab, and right there, Mike Guess finally comes in to make that. But that is why Eric Trevelyan has been such a great player for this Tampa Bay franchise. Never see a finer catch than that, Don Heinrich. It's as good as you can get, I'll tell you. Reeves now four out of six for 53 yards. Another first down. Remember, they're inside the 20 again. They've been scoring every time here. The handoff to Anderson on the sweep. And he's inside the five-yard line. Sliding chin first out of bounds of the four with Willie Holly in hot pursuit. So Anderson gets about half on first and ten. In the last uh, three ball games, Tampa Bay has scored every time it's been inside the 20-yard line, 10 times, including nine touchdowns 
And here's the 11th time, and they're trying to get the 10th TD. And that person you just saw on the sidelines, that makes him extremely happy. Steve Spurrier, when you score every time you get into position like that. Now both Gillespie and Trevillian are wide to the right. Gillespie in motion. There's a rollout by Reeves. Reeves looking the end zone. Fires. Touchdown. Caught by Boone. Greg Boone pulls in the second Tampa Bay touchdown of the quarter. With five minutes to go, Tampa Bay's up its lead to 13 points. Well, they've had that hot hand the past several weeks. They've got it going. Reeves will roll out to the right. Play action fake right there to Anderson. Boone was the lead man. Coverage blown. Ball over the top. Six points coming in. Mike Guess coming over late. And six points for Tampa Bay. Reeves rolling right. You'll see Boone, 21, right there. Guess coming across. Play action held him. And it's just a walk-in touchdown. That kind is a gift. Now, decision with his second attempt of the night. Got it straight through the uprights. And it's a 14-point lead for Tampa Bay. The bandits are off and... John Reeves, 12-year NFL veteran, four teams there. And he's benched here early by Steve Spurrier, but since he's been put back in the lineup, John Reeves has become the leader of this team. And position, kicking off again, Eric Robinson, by Giza Taylor. Robinson takes it about the 11. Robinson fumbles, and Tampa Bay gets it again at the 31. And the roof is caving in on the Federals. McAllister gets his second fumble recovery of the first quarter. Watch it, Don. Well, he takes that ball near the sideline. As he comes up field, he's trying to pick up the wedge. Then he veers out to the right side. Watch the hand come in there. Gets the ball hooked away from him. And unfortunately, coughs the ball up. Gets another costly turnover as the Federals have fallen on very hard times. The ball popping out. Three people going for it. The ball skips away, bounces away again and then McAllister falling on it. That was Marv Christian who stripped the ball away. Now Tampa Bay first and goes to see if they go to Gillespie again. Play action fake. There's Reed. He is going to Trevelyan, and it's out of bounds. He got it, then dropped it, but out of bounds. Incomplete pass, it'll be second and 10. Well, every time Reeves has gone for the ball. Well, after a turnover, as we mentioned earlier, that Steve Spurrier figuring there might be a, a little bit of a, a lax approach. There's the man that recovered the fumble, McAllister. He's happy about it, but turnovers immediately hurting him, and Spurrier trying to get the cheap one. That time, Trevelyan went down, ran about a 10 or 12-yard hook, then took off upfield, but Reeves let him outside, not a bounce. All right, young McAllister's happy, a young rookie from the University of Florida, and his second fumble recovery. Second and ten. One running back. Reeves gets picks a pocket. Sideline goes and tended it down there for Brodsky. Broken up around the 12-yard line. Brodsky, who's first-year player from the University of Miami, looked very well in practice, got his chance. He hasn't caught many passes. There it is at the tail end with Jeff Brown and Victor Jackson coming across to help make the play. Brodsky's Brodsky's only caught three passes coming into this football game, but as you indicated, getting an opportunity to play a lot more here this evening. Well, he's with New Jersey last year and then signed on as a free agent with Tampa Bay here for 1984. 14-0, the bandage lead. John Reeves. He's already thrown for one touchdown, and he doesn't like what he sees. Third down play. He wants to come over here and talk things over with Steve Spurrier. Well, there's two fine quarterbacks, both from the University of Florida, and they'll have their meeting. Third and ten for Reeves. Here's Reeves, deep drop. Out of the backfield, guts Boone. Boone to the 20. Boone, and he takes a couple of players with him for a first down to about the 17-yard line. Oh, he's a tough little kid. This guy, Greg Boone from Duke University. Great job by Reeves on this particular play, and that's what Spurrier's talking about, the great confidence. As you see him drop straight back, he's looking upfield all the way. He doesn't see who he wants. Now look at him adjust and come off to Boone, who is wide open over there. That's what they talk about when a, when a coach says they want a quarterback to read defenses. Reeves did it absolutely perfectly. So Tampa Bay's back inside the 20 again. Let's see if he can keep the string going. There's a delayed handoff, and Anderson breaking with open room. Inside the 10, the 5, touchdown! Touchdown for Anderson, and a beautiful 
powerful run from 17 yards. Well, Tampa Bay has exploded with all its guns. The draw play off the left side. Boone, 21, gets a good block to that side. Dan Fike, the tackle, opens it up. But then Anderson, changing direction, just outlegs him to the corner of the goal line. That's Victor Jackson, number 20, that's chasing him. And Anderson scores his 10th touchdown on the ground. His longest run coming into this game had been just 18, that being 17. And uh, he showed once again why he is one of the premier players in this league. Second touchdown of this first quarter by Gary Anderson. It's been a rollicking period for Tampa Bay. Disastrous for Washington. And position kicks it, but there goes the penalty flag down. It's a hold up. You penalty know, flags were thrown. You know, Jim, you talk about that last touchdown of Anderson's. One of the reasons he got a relatively slow start this season was that he had a sprained ankle the first week of training camp. Missed a lot of work and really didn't get into the action until uh, the first All part sides. of the season. Defense, penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Washington offside, the count is good, and now the score, 3.39 to go. They've been plagued by turnovers. Robinson to the 20, 25-30, another good run back, out over the 40. So Eric Robinson continues to roll those kickoffs back and get good field position for the Federals, but Washington has just been destroyed by turnovers in the first half. That's the first thing they got to do. First down play, they got a blood saw. Has to go outside, nothing up the middle. Very little of theirs. Kelly Kirchbaum rides him down with a rodeo tackle around the 45-yard line. Well, we've got bad news here for Washington. Joel Patton sprained his right knee. Definitely is going to be out for the rest of this game. That'll be a loss for them, a left tackle. Well, that'll bring Dave Sullivan in there, number 76. Of course, Patton was 6'6", 270 out of Duke. Dave Sullivan is 6'7", 268 from Virginia. So we'll see what he can do. A couple of players from the Atlantic Coast Conference. This is Kirchbaum who made the tackle coming off the side. And he looks like he's holding his shoulder a little bit there, Don. He's had some shoulder problems. He was injured last year a good share of the time. He's a leading tackler on that ball club. A tough, smart athlete. But he's wounded a little right now. Uh, here's Walters in the slot out the left side. Here comes Hoinsey rolling to Walters' side. Drills it down here and hits his man. Looks like Taylor Bledsoe out of the backfield. And he's bumped out of bounds around the midfield. Well, Kel Kelly Kirchbaum, who plays the middle linebacker in the 4-3 defense, you can see on his face, he wants back in that contest. They went from the 3-4 where he was an inside linebacker when they had two inside linebackers in that position. Now he's got it all to himself, and he said, I want back in. This is fun. We're out front, 21-0. It's the second time the ball has been in Tampa Bay territory. The last time down here, Coincy had one of his deep passes picked off for an interception. Third down, about two. On short yards, Coincy. Coincy fires. Got the first down. At the 40-yard line, penalty flag is dropped down. That might have been Billy Taylor. It was. Taylor out of the backfield. Carries it down close to 25, but... It's going to be a penalty against Washington, and some things are going bad. As Murphy's Law say, they continue to go bad to worse. <laughs> well, I'm sure that Mike Hoensey feels the same way. They've uh, started adjusting a little bit. That time he went back in the pocket as Dick Bielski consulting his play card. Saying, what do I want to call now? Get... Number 76 on the offense. Third down. Well, that's David Sullivan, the man who came into place to replace Joel Patton. So the injury... Rears its ugly head here very early again for Washington. As Washington crossed the 50 for the first time, and now Dick Bielski reaches into the bag of tricks, and he's got about third and uh, 12 or 13 yards to go. Greg Taylor comes in for Ricky Simmons with a wide receiver post. Walters and Harris is up to the right side, and Hoynesy on long yard. It's third down. All to the middle, threw it behind uh, Taylor. Incomplete. So Washington will have to give up the football, but barring a snap, a fumble on the snap, it'll be by the punt and not by a turnover. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, either, Jim, that Ponce that time probably had better protection than he's had any other time he's went back to throw. And it's like he get too much time. He tried to steer it in, threw the ball a little bit behind him, and he had, had he completed it, had some running room, would have been close to the first down, but just an incompletion. There's... Uh, Dave Smigelski, who certainly helped the Washington punting picture since he came on. 
First year player of Virginia Tech. Alvin Bailey. Never called for a fair catch his whole career. Daniel will call for one this time. Bailey. Oh, he gambles and loses. Washington recovers on the 31. Big gamble by Bailey. I guess from a 21-point lead, he thinks he could try that. Well, I'll tell you what, Jim. You said he never, ever calls for a fair catch. In that instance, he made a bad decision to try and go down low to field that football. He should have let it drop. You'll see the ball way in front of him as he dives for it. Goes right over the top. Gets a block from the side. Good job over there to keep the first, second man down off of him. Joe but Hines. Then, yeah, Joe Hines is the guy who gets the number 50. But then to recover. See the block coming across there? That's a good job as they get the kick out on Dwayne Anderson. Well, an opportunity now for Washington. They'll see if they can turn things around a little bit here. All the luck can go in the other way. And it up to Bledsoe, hitting right back on a counter play in by the 25-yard line. Mike Clark, a right in of Tampa Bay, stops him there. That's a pretty good gain here in this field position. They'll spot it at the 22. And that's going to be very close to a first down. Reed's looking yeah. on. He said, well, we got it going right now, but Washington's threatening. He don't want to let up. You never feel safe. Bledsoe in the last play. Good cutback behind it. They've got Harris and Walters both to the right side. And they hand it off to Billy Taylor out of the backfield. And there goes the penalty flag as Taylor drives inside the 20. James Ramey. Another big stop uh, for Tampa Bay. Holding. That's going to be against Washington. The floodgates have been all against Dick Bilski. Three costly turnovers. Got a break back there a moment ago on the kickoff fumble, but now it draws a costly penalty. Well, they pick up nice yardage on the first down. And it's Cold indicated. Over. Number 53 on the offense. Second down. Brian Musselman, the center, gets the call for the holding in there, but unfortunately, at the moment, the Federals having great difficulty getting any kind of combination going for him. If it is an interception, it's a fumble. If it isn't that, it's a holding penalty. And you really hate to get those calls against you when you're deep in the other club's territory. Ricky Simmons now is back in the lineup. He's down the left out of your picture. Split wide to the right, the left. Walters in the slot up there to the right. Rush is on the point here, and he gets rid of it and completes it. Down around the 30-yard line, that got to be Walters. That was Kirschbaum who was really putting the heat, and Walters, clever as he is, saw that blitz, and he doubled back, Don. Super job by both Hohensee as he drops back. You see 51, Kirschbaum right up the slot. The safety is coming, too. Tim King, 38. But Hohensee, quick release, dumps that ball off. Walters adjusting. Hohensee letting the ball go, anticipating it, and uh, Kelly Kirschbaum helping him anticipate by breathing down his neck. The tackle made by strong safety Dwayne Anderson. This could be the last play of the first quarter with 32 seconds to go. 21 nothing Washington yeah. leads. Oh, again in trouble, and he's going to be sacked. Up over the 30 by Mike Clark, who crashed in at right in. Number 79, four-year veteran from the University of Florida. Well, Mike Hohensee will drop back here, but the pressure will come from the right side of your screen. That's where Clark is. Clark, number 79, getting the hand on him. Hohensee's been sacked 20 times this season coming in. That's his 21st. Never really had a chance. Would have expected him maybe to roll out or sprint away to try and get away from some of that pressure. They'll be trying a field goal of 51 yards. And kicking will be Jeff Rockhouse from Missouri. He is at four out of five since coming in here to give some life to an otherwise dismal kicking here for Washington. Now flags were thrown and whistles before the snap. I think it ran down to the quarter. So end of the, you're right, Don, the end of the first period. So we'll see if they try the field goal when we come back for the start of the second quarter. There's very little wind out here. As a matter of fact, seems to be none right now. So that's the end of the first period with a score. Tampa Bay Band is 21. Washington Federal. It'll be the fourth straight win if Tampa Bay wins this one, which would tie the club record. Now, Washington, as the first period ended, was lined up for a 51-yard field goal. And that's how we'll start here. I guess Bielski figures a long field goal attempt as good as a punt. He might get three points out of it from Jeff Brockhouse, who's hit four out of five. No and prior to his joining the club on April 11th, they were 0 for 8. Long drop. Long 
driving kick, 51 yards by Brockhouse, and Washington is on the board, and how about that, Don Hundred? Well, really, you know, Jim, I don't blame Dick Bielski at this stage for going for that field goal. Some people might be wondering, say, what, go for a field goal from there? Or why not, if you're going to do that, try and throw the football for the first down? But what he's looking for is any little bit of encouragement momentum-wise for his ball club. The 51-yard field goal, which is his longest of the season, now kicks off for Washington. And waiting is Alvin Bailey fumbles it back into the end zone. Bailey's going to go back there and cover it. So Bailey has tried handling two kicks, and he hasn't been able to handle either one of them. Well, a little touch of the dropsies. He wants to feel them anywhere. That one uh, was in a bad spot, right in his hands at the at the numbers, and he still uh, kicked it away. So after played off the feet, 21 nothing. There's the drive. Four plays. They actually lost yards, but on fourth and 13, after stop by that really rugged Tampa Bay defense, Brockhouse nailed a 51-yard field goal. It's now 21 to three. Now Reeves brings out the bandage. They haven't been stopped yet, but this is the first time they started back in their own territory. Here's the reverse play, setting up for Gillespie. And Reeves looking for a block. Gillespie cuts back up inside to the 27. Willie Holly pulled down Gillespie as they try a little razzle-dazzle, and Steve Spurrier will do that. A fine job by Willie Holly as the handoff going to Anderson, the reverse to Gillespie. Holly will come in from the left side of your picture. Reeves, he kind of fakes a little block there and says, nah, that's not my job. And Willie Holly steps inside of him to make the play. Game was worth six yards, second down and four. Tampa Bay up at 26. Another handoff by Reeves. This one goes to Anderson, straight up the middle, trying to get the first down. Stopped by Benny Smith, the nose guard of Washington. Big fella, 6'3", 260. There's Anderson, who got all of his contract problems behind him and is now settled in here as a solid running back for Tampa Bay. He is a tremendous threat, a guy that a lot of people felt that was an equally good receiver from the outside as he was a running back out of the backfield. Third and one for Tampa Bay. And they go to the fullback, Boone, and he just on brute strength takes it over the 30 for the first down. Oh, he's a tough little kid, only 5'9". Well, there's the guy that you've read a lot about. We're talking about Reggie Collier, who was a spectacular quarterback at uh, Southern Mississippi, but he has not picked up the nuances of professional football yet, and so he's looking off the sidelines. Well, the thing that's been really a problem for Reggie is that he's had a high interception ratio. He's thrown uh, 123 passes, but he's had nine interceptions in that period. <laughs> They fake the reverse this time. Anderson keeps it, cuts it back up inside. Reversing field. Anderson up to the 40-yard line. Well, there's a little broken field for you. The play was busted dead as Washington read the fake. Mike Guess stayed right in that free safety and finally made the stop. But Anderson got a pretty good gain out of it. Well, it's the same wrinkle with Anderson going to the left side, faking to Gillespie. Spurrier waiting a play or two comes back, a clip in the right-hand corner of your picture that you did not uh, get picked up by the officials. Willie Holly gets duked a little bit and Anderson turns it into a nice game. Well that might guess the guy who stopped him from Ohio State quite a player. 43 tackles. He led the tackles for Washington coming in play action fake and here's a perfectly thrown ball down inside the Washington territory and it's grabbed uh, at the 45 by Gillespie and guess is the guy that gets him again. First down for Tampa Bay. Well, it tells you a little something about that defensive club. Mike Guess, the free safety, leads the club in tackles with 61. That time, he was man for man on Gillespie, who they featured here this evening. He's got great quickness. All he did was run a sideline pattern, but got a nice gain out of it. Good throw by Reeves. Tampa Bay has not been stopped tonight. After the three turnovers, the first period, they scored each time a touchdown. And now they're trying to roll for their own 20, and they've got it to the 43 of Washington. Backfield is to Anderson. Straight power and down inside the 40. Good surge by the offensive line. 
Matt Newton, fire. the right guard. Chris Foote, the center. Fred Dean. As Anderson taking the handoff once again, that great cutback ability. You can see that defensive line just rolled back as he picks up about six yards on the play. Good offensive surge. There's his figures tonight. Plus, he scored two touchdowns tonight, hasn't he? Yep, one over the top and one on the long run to the corner. Had a handoff in the backfield, and this time Anderson is going to be wrapped up. Good Robert job. Cobb, the captain for Washington, made sure that one didn't cause any damage. Well, John Kane, I, uh, the offensive right tackle doesn't cut him off as Anderson coming back. You see Cobb coming into the picture, 74, runs it down from behind. That's why coaches talk about offside blocking, offside control. Kane did not seal Robert Cobb, and Robert Cobb made a nice play. Another third down play. Tampa Bay is two out of three on third downs. <laughs> And he's going for all of it. Down the sidelines, incomplete. Boy, he had his man down there and just threw it a little bit too much. And the disgust on Reeves' face because with a flag down, we'll get the call on that. Jeff Brown, the corner, was beaten badly on the sideline and up move. He was... He was hook, line, and sinker as he went for that sideline move, and then... Oh, Gillespie had him by five yards. Oh, at least. Gillespie turned it upfield, and he had a gift. Gillespie... Personal foul. Head slap. Number 59 on the defense. First down. Well, there's Harold Randolph, the outside linebacker on the right side and the left side of the screen. A little head slap up there, which is... Illegal. That's a costly penalty for Washington, too, because really? they had stopped Tampa Bay. That's their fifth penalty here in this game for 40 yards. And it gives Tampa Bay new life. Just outside the 20-yard line. Reeves on first down. Reeves is going to the corner. And it's touchdown. Top of the tight end, Harvey. Hard Rock Harvey had a great week last week. That's another touchdown in this one. An excellent throw by Reeves, getting great protection as he starts to drop back. He's got to come to the left side. It's a down and out by Harvey. Good protection, good field of vision, lays it up just over the top. 59 there, trying to chase him, Harold Randolph. Coming into the pitcher, a defensive back, but Harvey with 9-7 speed on the down and out move. Beat them all, scores his fifth touchdown of the season. And Don John Reeves is just executing beautifully. That really? ball was perfectly thrown. And Recession now comes in to try and add the 28th point. His fourth try tonight, a little sailor, and no, it's wide to the right. Only the third time this year that Andrew Sisson is missed on the conversion. There's Marvin Harvey gets the touchdown to make the score now, midway in the second quarter. Just missed on that try for point, leaving it 27-3. Back deep for Washington, Eric Robinson. A little short kick kick on up there around the 20-yard line. And he's not going to go anywhere. Oh, those big linemen up there really belted hard. I think it was Dan Triplett. Marv Christian's the guy who took him down. So Triplett, who was in there for blocking, suddenly found himself with the ball. And nowhere to go. And a little unusual position for him as he's in there specifically for a blocking position. But once he got it, he knew that he drew a crowd. And Mike Coins, he brings Washington back to the line of scrimmage here with his team trailing 27-3, Tampa Bay in the lead. There's a delayed handoff in the backfield, and Bledsoe is going to be thrown inside the 20 by Fred Nordgren. Great containment defense by Tampa Bay set up that uh, loss. There's the scoring drive, 80 yards and eight plays. So they prove they can take it and drive it right down the field. They don't have to necessarily have the turnovers. Now it's second and 15 for Hoynsey. Quick pass, and he goes out to wide receiver, and that's Walters, who stopped uh, for just a short game. Hit down by Alonzo Johnson, a right side linebacker. 
Alonzo Johnson, extremely quick for his size, 6'3", 230. He's been a formidable pass rusher on the blitz. He can cover well on the pass. And yet he can hold up people, and he's had problems. When he came out of high school, he had a couple of broken wrists, and he can't really bend those hands. He stands in there pretty stout. Washington's really been shut down by this Tampa defense. They've allowed only 39 yards. Owens oh, over a lot of time. Long with the Walters at the 42-yard line of Tampa Bay. That time, the Washington line did protect for Hoinsey, and Walters was the clever runner he is, got open for the long game. Excellent protection for Hoinsey as he drops straight back. Watch him take his time and look around. Got the ball down low. Now he brings it up high. Quick release down the middle as he spots Walters. Walters going in low for the football, goes to his knees. Good job by Butler here, 77, but... Seavey, Jeff Seavey, the right tackle, eight-year veteran, stiffs him on the spot, played several years for the Seahawks. Good job. Biggest play of the game for Washington. Inside handoff to Bledsoe. Isn't going to get much. Stopped by Kirchbaum, the middle linebacker. Does move it inside the 40-yard line. So it'll bring up second down about seven on the 40-39. 27 to three, Tampa Bay in the lead, but Washington for the first time in the game beginning to roll. Washington won its first game last week, and Bielski felt they came in here with a lot of momentum, but they quickly frittered all that away with three first-quarter turnovers. Yes, he said they had uh, good practices all week, and of course, you know, nobody coaches fumbles and interceptions. That's part of the game. Kills coaches. Ah, deep handoff again to uh, Bledsoe. And he's cut down. So Bledsoe, who ran wild last week against Oakland with 165 yards, has been checked so far here by Tampa Bay. Well, Curtis Bledsoe off the right side, lead block in front of him, cuts back to the left side, but 68 right there. Fred Nordgren controlling Pacella, the offensive left guard, makes it makes him cut back to the inside and drops it for a, a very short gain, maybe a yard or possibly a yard and a half. So once again, one of those long third down situations. Only 27 yards for uh, Bledsoe. So now they got some blockers in there for Hoinsey. Third down and six at the 38. And he gets time and he finds his man for a first down inside the 30 yard line. Ricky Simmons cutting across the middle with Jeff George right on him, and he makes a gutsy catch for a first down around the 28. A gutsy catch and a great catch, because the ball was low and behind him, and he was trying to put on the brakes. The turf kind of gave out from under him. He reaches back for the football. Hawnsey coming back. Not too bad a protection. Wants to go left. Nothing there. Comes back to the right. Look at the ball behind him as Simmons putting on the brakes with George on top of him. Number 33, George saying, gee, many Christmas. I can't stay any closer to him than that. How can he catch it? On first down, they give it again to Bledsoe. Tries to cut back against the grain, and he's spilled at the 22 by Kurtzbaum. But Kurtzbaum's played a really solid middle linebacker. Too. Well, he had a great year for him a year ago, although he missed a fair portion of the season with injuries. Now when they've gone to the 4-3, it's really kind of uh, moved him to the front, where... The middle linebacker in a 4-3 generally is expected to make tackles. They have the two defensive tackles trying to keep the blockers off of him, be it the guard to the center. And Kirchbaum has responded extremely well. Bielski now has come in with a tight end. McDonald Oden taking Simmons out. Normally plays a three-wide receiver. Gets another blocker in there for Bledsoe. And Bledsoe's collared well short of the first down. Around the 20-yard line. That'll bring up third down for Washington. Kirchbaum again was in there. Ed Fulton, 64, gets the surge there, but you see him just control the defensive lineman. That's 68, Fred Nordgren, 5'11", 245 pounds, has tremendous leverage, great quickness off the ball, played the nose tackle into 3-4, now playing a defensive tackle was maybe a little more effective when he was on the center by himself, but a great job there. Well, Kirchbaum's got a great nose for the ball. There's the third down situation. Washington's only one out of five. And here it is, third and two. Yeah, you get a free dinner. Oh, and see, off in the flat two. Flat's over the first down and more. Inside the ten for first and goal. 
So he circles it back out there. Bledsoe does Hoensey, and he hits him easily for the first down. Pretty play. This is exactly what Hoensey's going to have to do. Start rolling away from the pressure. Good throw to the left side to Bledsoe. Bledsoe breaking the first tackle on Warren Hanna, then turning it upfield. 11th reception, gets to the 7-yard line. They're threatening. Hard throw for a quarterback to that left side. See the quick release as he dumps it out there. Good balance on the part of Bledsoe. Well, Washington's proving if they can get away from the turnovers, they can play solid football. Here they are, first and goal. They brought it right back. Bledsoe over the middle to the three. Curtis Bledsoe's been a workhorse here in this uh, first half. Been held down only about 30 yards or so, maybe 32 or 3. Mike Clark stopped him that time. Well, you know, Bledsoe broke some ribs in the preseason game against New Jersey. He missed the first three ball games, so he's really now starting to get the feel of it and come into his own, but he's uh, he's been an effective player for him the last several games. Very important here that Washington get in the end zone here. Final minutes of the first half. Way down in the game. They give the Bledsoe, and he stopped uh, at least two yards short. When Kirk's found again, the bottom of the stack with a tackle. I was about to say, Jim, uh, your ever-present Kelly Kirchbaum underneath it with James Harrell, the outside linebacker, number 50, giving him some help. I would expect that at this stage, Dick Bielski realizes it's going to be tough to run against that strong Tampa Bay defensive unit. I would suspect that he would get Hohensey rolling out one side or the other, try to get away from that pressure, and then see if he can pop it to one of those receivers or option runners. That's Walters in the slot to the left side. Third down and two. Hohensey fires it to Walters. Can't handle it. And complete pass. Walters, number 17, is the end zone. Taylor was the man intended right in front of him, but Alonzo Johnson was putting so much pressure on Hohensey, he really didn't have time to set Two-minute warning, and it is Tampa Bay 27, Washington 3. Yeah, the team trailing by 24 points. Well, I can't believe on that last play that they did not roll Hohensey out, give him the option, run or throw. They gambled. Alonzo Johnson was blitzing. Nobody picked him up. Unfortunately, it was incomplete. They have to go for it here on fourth down. Harris is split to the right, and Walters is in the slot. Let's see if Hohensey rolls right. Yep, here he comes. Hohensey rolling right. Hohensey throws the end zone, tipped, and it is incomplete. Might have been intercepted, but it's broken up. Mike Butler, number 77, big 6'5 defensive left end. Got a mid on that pass, and Washington has the door slammed in its face. Well, it's unfortunate as Hohensey now rolling to the right. Good block right there by number 35, Ricky Klatt. But here comes Butler across the 6'5. He gets up in the air, just a little bit of a slow release. Slow reaction on Hohensey's part to get rid of it quicker. And unfortunately, a nice drive, their best of the evening. They come away with no points. Well, that was not an interception. As you saw the signal from the official, the ball was trapped. That could have been important because Tampa Bay will have come out to the 20. Instead, they take over the line of scrimmage on their own two-yard line. But they have stopped Washington's most serious threat for a touchdown. And to protect their big lead, 27-3. Three, one minute, 53 seconds to go in the first half. Reeves has it off to Anderson, and his bread and butter guy tries the right side. Now he's pounded back over the sideline. There you see Jeff George. He thought he had the interception. He, he expressed that a little bit, didn't he? He's gone, gone. He said, oh, so I got to get those interceptions. I had a couple coming in, had another opportunity. He, he just went through the whole family. Yes, he did. Fox running here with a minute 22. You can do that when you're ahead 27-3. Reeves are just trying to avoid any kind of disaster here, a turnover. And now he's going to throw the end zone. Reeves, ooh, almost picked off. And it is complete over there to Harbin, the tight end. Whoa, what a dangerous call. I don't know, Don. Let me hear your opinion on that play. Well, I'll tell you. I think that uh, John Reeves got away with one because as Harvey's going to the outside, you see cutting across in front of him is Jeff Brown, just a half a step late, but he gets them out of their territory or as deep as they were from the end zone area for the first down. Very dangerous. I don't believe I'd ever called one of those types. Well, the band has dodged a bullet. And with a 27 3 lead, Reeves the air again. Bat it down there. Oh, a good charge by the Federal defense. 
Robert Cobb was in there, number 74. I think he's the guy that got it. 6'4", 255 from the University of Arizona. And here's Cobb. Cobb coming in from the left side of the screen as Reeves dropping back to throw again. I'm still surprised that they are. Takes an inside move on John Kani, gets him beat. And it's like the old volleyball spike as he goes high in the air to stuff it back in the end zone. Stops the clock with 104 to go. There's Robert Cobb, captain of the defense for the Federals. Came in a trade from the Chicago Blitz. Now over the middle again, it's incomplete. He was going to Anderson out of the backfield. And the reason he was, he was getting tremendous pressure from the defense of the Washington Federals as he's dropping back. He lets go of that ball before Anderson running a circle even has a chance. You see, from the left side, you got uh, Kevin Kellen coming. From the right, it was Robert Cobb. And Reeves says, whew, I've been around too long to know that I got to get rid of that football. He wants more points with just a minute to go at 27 to 3, but he's living a little dangerously right now. Larry Brodsky has come in for Eric Trevilian. One minute to go. And maybe it brought the word in here from uh, Steve Spurrier. They run the draw play to Boone. Penalty flag thrown as Boone is pulled down after a short game by Robert Cobb. Call Boone. The call was made by the umpire, Tommy Myers. It'll be the first penalty whistled against Tampa Bay. Spurrier showing uh, a little disgust. Number 64 on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, I think the official... Uh, in making the decision. Well, it could be Chuck Pitcock, the center offensive guard, uh, number 64, but he isn't listed on their active roster. Back in the end zone is Andrew's issue to punt, and here's Eric Robinson. This will be Tampa Bay's first punt of the first half. Low snap, but he gets it off. Nice one. Robinson comes over, fair catch called and taken around the 43. So oh, Washington will have uh, less than a minute to go. 48 seconds remaining in the first half. Remember, the Federals just drove a few minutes ago. There's the penalty flag on this play. Well, if this doesn't go against Washington, yep, they'll have excellent field position. They do have three timeouts, so with 48 seconds, they could get a lot of plays off. Plus two, you bear in mind, and it looks like it's going to be uh, against Tampa Bay, and that should uh, enhance their field position a little bit better, but in the last two minutes of the half or at the end of the football game, the clock is stopped when they move the chains on a first down, so there's really adequate time to get Puts into the end zone. Ball, number 26 on the receiving team, first down. I didn't think they taught that at Southern Methodist, where Dwayne Anderson, the strong safety, is from. Well, maybe they didn't teach it, but he's the guilty man. 27-3, the bandage lead will be right back. You know, Tampa Bay, by throwing the football here just before the half, has uh, eaten up that time to give the Federals another opportunity. That's an unusual shot we have there. Give you a view of how it looks to the players. All I can say, a little short one, and it goes to Billy Taylor. That won't gain him anything. Taylor out of the backfield. They're going to probably go on a no-huddle offense right here, hurrying things up with the clock rolling down. 33 seconds. Owens, he's got 33, uh, 38 yards to go now. Points the over the middle, and it's caught by Simmons, or Jeff, it is Simmons. Boy, Simmons, who didn't get much experience in college because he played the opposite wide receiver spot from Fryer in Nebraska, and you know who they were going to. But here's a young rookie, fourth-round draft choice for the Federal, showing what he can do. He's got great speed at 4.5 for the 40. Points he rush, points he away from one man. Completes out of the backfield. Here goes Billy Taylor inside the 15-yard line. Now they can at least go for a field goal. They stop the clock with 13 seconds. And Tom, or Don, maybe time for another pass or two. Really, and a great job by Mike Hohensey as he just did a magnificent job of breaking away. Watch there as they get the jersey, they grab him with by the jersey, but he fights loose from number 79, Mike Clark, just to dump the ball off to Taylor. Oh, boy, was that a big play. Great athlete that he can make that kind of an adjustment. Of course, at Minnesota, he did run the ball a fair amount of the time. So he is he is quick on his feet. Now the score tonight, San Antonio Gunslingers 7, Arizona Wranglers nothing. That's in the first quarter. George Allen. Less than four minutes left, yep. George Allen falling on a little bit of hard times, it appears. Newhouse of the Stocks, 40 yards for the touchdown. 
Dick Bielski talking with Hohensee, telling him what he wants to do. They still have one timeout remaining, and at the 13-yard line, it'd be a tremendous lift if they could get into the end zone. I would suspect that he's going to have to go to the end zone. With 13 seconds left, he could get off certainly one, if not two, plays if they go with fairly quick rhythm passes. See what uh, Tampa Bay does. See if they are coming here on Hornsey. Takes a little time to get the guys into the end zone from out the uh, 15-yard line. 13 seconds to go. Hornsey. Hornsey. To the end zone. He's coming down here, and he was trying to hit Fisher. Mike Fisher in the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Stops the clock with seven seconds to go. Now, you go for the field goal here. Or do you try one more? You'd probably go. Well, I'd say he's going to go for the field goal. I think I would personally try one more. You know, they alternate Mike Harris and Mike Fisher out there. He ran a post-corner move, and Hohensee a little late in throwing the ball. At this stage, three points. I don't believe I'd go that direction. I'd take another pop at it. Well, they got a timeout left. How about a fake? That'd be a great call right now. Let's see if they're going to go for it. Rockhouse is there. Nope. Rockhouse drills it through to second field goal. He's already tied the record at 51 yards. And now he just put one again through here from about 28 yards. And Washington has its second score of the night. But they're catching up all too gradually. Tampa Bay out with that quick 21 up. No question Washington has run into a buzzsaw here tonight and turnovers being costly. Now here's Alvin Bailey. Remember he's had trouble handling the ball tonight. And this is really boom by Brockhouse. Back in the end zone, Bailey's going to keep it in right there with four seconds to go. Four seconds to go in the half and Rees are penalty flag thrown. Marker is down back of the line of scrimmage, which would make you think it's going to be offsides against the Washington. In which case, I think Tampa Bay may take the play and just run out the four seconds. I would think that would be the thing to do at this stage of the football games. Yes, here comes John Reeves and the offensive unit onto the field. So. Offsides on the kicking team. The penalties decline. First down. You often wonder with a quarterback when he touches down that one knee, if he's sitting in there thinking, I wonder who's going to take a big shot at me instead of just tapping me on the shoulder. Now well, let's see if Reeves does. He may let somebody else take the pop. Yep, he's going to hand it off to Boone. Here comes Boone breaking through. Quick opening hole over the 30, and he's going to rack up about a 12-yard gain on the final play of the first half from Tampa Stadium. And it was all Tampa here, an opportunist team that uh, jumped on with Reeves hitting 9 out of 15. There's the halftime score. Tampa Bay 27, Washington 6. USFL football from Tampa, Florida tonight. Just perfect conditions. Temperatures down in the 70s. They're going to go to Ricky Williams over to about the 11-yard line. In the 30 and then drag down at the 31 or 32-yard line. So Tampa Bay goes to action right there. First down for Tampa Bay if it's on 32. Reeves play action fake. Reeves going for the long one down to Scott Harvey. Harvey at the 40-yard line. The tight end. Oh, does... Reeves come out firing again, just as he did in the first half. Well, if you ever think that a quarterback doesn't read defenses, they double cover both outside receivers, Gillespie and Trevelyan, and immediately down the middle of Marvin Harvey, a mismatch on 52, Joe Hines, and coming across, finally, the strong safety to make the tackle, Victor Jackson, number 20. But the mismatch was there. Harvey outlegged him. Quick first down by Tampa Bay. Continuing what they did in the first half, we're right up a 27 to 6 lead. Here's the second play. A little tip pass, almost picked off. That time he was going toward the left sideline, trying to hit E.T., Eric Trevelyan. Steve Spurrier, who has built, uh, been the architect here of this young team that has suddenly caught fire, now shooting for its fourth consecutive win in the USFL, which would tie them for second place. Nice little move there, Steve. It was a good move. It kind of looked like a flag man on an aircraft carrier signaling those planes to come in. He says, John, I want you to call this one. John says, whoa, wait a minute. I don't recall that signal. Uh, he's a bright young coach. Came here from Duke University where he built a great offense. Inside hand off, and here comes Anderson trying to get some running room, and he's spilled uh, short of the 35-yard line. Well, Anderson wanted to go up the middle on this play. They were going to run a trap. They had brought Fred Dean, the left guard, across, but there was nothing there. Again, you see the quickness of Anderson as he breaks it outside but loses his footing to go down. 
San Antonio continues to lead Arizona 14 7 now in the second quarter. George Hallen still having problems. Third down and seven for Tampa Bay. Reeves. Reeves firing just as he's hit. Tampa Bay exploded in the first quarter. They got three consecutive turnovers from Washington. They went in to score on each and every one of them to lead 21 nothing. And then the game settled down to kind of an even affair. With the each team scoring six points, Tampa Bay on a touchdown with a kick after it was missed and getting two field goals. One of them was a club record 51 yards by Jeff Brockhouse. And that's how things stood at halftime, 27 to 6. That's the way they are right now as Xenon Andresition comes in for his second punt of the game. Eric Robinson back deep for Washington. High down, it's a fake. And here's the run. It's a lineman heading over the 20. That's Boone, the fallback, inside the 20. And Tampa Bay is letting it all hang out here against Washington. And Washington, which had stopped him in his opening drive and meant a great deal to their momentum. Boone, the up back, number 21 to right. You'll see 21 there. You'll see 56 get a nice block. You'll see 54 come out in front of him to help out. But caught the Federals totally by surprise, and if you don't think that doesn't take the air out of your balloon, Spurrier says, whew, am I glad that worked? I called it, boys. He said, thanks a lot. You made me look good, but uh, well, Spurrier's been known to do tricks out there. There's a guy he likes, Greg Boone, who played under him at Duke University. It was a great runner there. Didn't get a chance. Now here's another reverse. They got a flea flicker pitch to quarterback and an incomplete pass. Just activated this week by Steve Spurrier, and he makes a touchdown catch, and it's 33-6. As Reeves dropping back, excellent possession, protection, post pattern, coming to the inside. He just really too far off. Jeff Brown the corner, and of course, 44, Mike Thurman coming across. Six points. And recession to try with a point after. He missed one tonight, he's three for four. Four, six, and the Tampa Bay lead runs out to 28 points. 12 minutes to go, and let's watch this perfect throw again by John Reeves. Well, you can make perfect throws, and John with the hot hand with excellent protection down the middle is coming across late as 44 Mike Gus after the corner was beaten. And the session kicks off. Bumped it down there, and it's fumbled there by Robinson. Picks it up. Getting the run. 40. Needs a block. To the 50, not a great run by Robinson. That's been one bright thing today, tonight by Washington. The kickoff returns of Eric Robinson, and maybe a penalty added on here. Well, he came into this game having a little bit of a bad knee. You wouldn't notice it. Last year when they played, he had a 94-yard kickoff return against Tampa Bay, which stood up as the longest in the season. Matter of fact, I think it's a league record. Yeah, I believe it is, but... Right. foul. Number 35 on the defense. Well, they're going to add on some more yardage. The even better for field position. Well, he juggles it around, drops it, picks it up, says, where is it? Finally gets it. That'll happen at times. Things tend to set up and open up for you when, when you fumble the ball around there. The Z-man kind of puts an arm out, says, I'm too old to hit, hit him. He said, that isn't in my contract. Brodsky getting his first catch. And Reeves' third touchdown pass of the night. Play action fake by Hoynsey. Hoynsey fires, and it is caught inside the five-yard line by Walters. Sure-handy Joey Walters from Clemson University with those great hands pulls it out of the clutches of another defensive player. Watch it. Well, pretty good protection this time for Hoynsey, but I'll tell you what, the concentration of Joey Walters, good delivery, but look at Walters right in there. He knows coming across is Tim King, the free safety, and he's going to get belted from the backside. But he was locked in on that football as Jeff George, number 33, took him down in the defensive secondary. But Washington now coming right back quickly. First and go. We'll see if they can get it in this time. They've been down there before at the two-yard line and had to settle for a field goal. That is first and goal from the three. And they give it to Bledsoe, and he is chilled hard. A crunching tackle around the three-yard line. Number 77, Mike Butler, comes off the bottom of the stack. Bledsoe off the right side, power play. The handoff from Hohensee, but quick conversion there. 
to slap it down in a hurry as far as the defense is concerned. I would expect they've got to go to the air quickly. They can't knock them out of there. They're having too much difficulty. John Benson made that stop. He's a rookie from Florida a &M. Second down play. They give it again to Bledsoe, and again he stopped cold. I think he got something done. They're quick to learn, or rather slow to learn here, the Federals are, about trying to puncture the line. Well, they just turned the play over and back off to the left side with the same action. A lead drive right there, but they're getting too much penetration. They're really getting overpowered by the defensive line surge. Bledsoe can't get in. Now third and long, pretty much you're telling him that you're going to be forced to put it in the air. First down, so what? You're that close, you still got a couple of more shots at it. Now you're forced to throw. Walters is in the slot with Harris to the right and Simmons to the left. Owensi throwing to the end zone. Touchdown. Flag is down. It was caught there by Fisher, I believe. Nope, that was Billy Taylor. Billy Taylor on the catch. Let's see what the flag's about. Well, if it is an offensive pushing, it'll be six points. Big catch against the defense. Touchdown, Washington. And they finally score the six. So Washington kind of bounces right back. You got to hand it to these young guys. They've been banged around this year, but they come back fighting, Don. Great job by Hohensee. It's coming from the right side of your screen. You'll see James Harrell, 50, right in his face. Nobody took him. And that also meant that nobody covered Billy Tabor, Taylor coming out of the backfield. But Hohensee going high in the air, dumped well, it off and not appeared for two. Washington. Yes, just about. Well, no, they're yep. putting it down. Yep, they sure are. But they might go for two. I thought so, too. Brockhouse is in to try it with a point after. He has certainly solidified Washington's kicking situation since he took over on April 11th. Kick is good. Reeves, a little outside pattern, is caught by Grotzi. Figuring out where he wants to start it from. Holding number 21 on the defense offense. Penalties decline. Well, they take the play, which, of course, results in the sack by Tharp. And Greg Boone, 21, walking away a little disgusted. He's the guy that gets called. Good adjustment on his part. He tries to come back across there to get Ke him. Kellen, number 93. He says, well, if you can't get him with a shoulder block, get the hook out there and see if you can get away with it. It didn't work. Ah, uh, Boone always wanted to play defense. 34-13, Tampa Bay. Man, it's moving. Now they call it third and 22. Here goes Reeves, going down the sideline, broken up. Trying to hit Marvin Harvey, the tight end, down in the Coffin corner. Victor Jackson coming from him. He made a nice play from Strong State. Was a fine play. You know, when Steve Spurrier said that Marvin Har Harvey's been a pleasant surprise, Reed back there, perfect protection, good follow-through, made a wrong choice right there. It's number 59, Harold Randolph is in front. That's the linebacker. And then coming over the top, strong safety Victor Jackson and they just slapped the football away if they could have intercepted it they'd have prevented the field goal attempt the 44 yard attempt now by hand position the hold at the 34 yard line there's the kick it is long enough and it is good a 44 yarder by hand position and the score goes up three more points Tampa Bay has been an inspired team Here's the kickoff being run back again by Eric Robinson. Robinson's made good kickoff returns all night. This time they catch him short of the 30 at the 29. We're down the final five minutes of the third period. There's Hoynson's log for the night. See what he can do on third down. They have a play coming with a blitz. And a quick release. And it's caught up over the middle. Nice catch by Joe Joey Walters. And it'll be a first down inside Tampa Bay territory. But going to get on the hit him right there off the back foot you don't get the tail end of the pressure with the blitz coming but he lays it up there very quickly the tackle made by Warren Hanna and Doug Bedoin who has come in to, to help out and I think I said on that last replay that it was Pacella at guard it was actually Jamie Farr the rookie that was in there to pick up Fred Nordgren first down they're going to hand it off again to Bledsoe tries the left side and that Tough Tampa Bay defense is there to greet him. Solid hit by Keith Clark, a left side linebacker. And he stopped Bledsoe for no gain. Second down and 10. You know, Walters is such a complete player. Runs all those routes and so sure-handed. 
And experience is one of the things that will teach you that. And he played six years for Saskatchewan and was all Canadian Football League before coming down here to the USFL as a free agent. And another thing, he's got such great body control to adjust to the ball in the air. Now they go over the middle to the tight end instead, and Greg Taylor it is. And Taylor makes the catch for a short game. Around the 45 where Tim King hit him down. King getting a start tonight has replaced Zach Henderson at free safety just with his good play. Well, Billy Taylor having a pretty good night for running and catching the football. He had an excellent 1983. Well, he did. He's had a slow start here in 84, halfway through the year. Kind of a tough year for Billy Taylor. Although he's caught 26 balls coming into here and gained almost 300 yards rushing. Points has to go to the end. Over the middle. And tended it over there for uh, Walters. That time he couldn't quite reach it. Covered by Doug Bedoin. And there's a perfect example of why Joey Walters is such a great receiver. The ball was out in front of him. It doesn't matter to him. He wants it wherever it is. He was selling out, diving for that football any way he could to get to it. Unfortunately, just a little out of his reach. Dave Smigelski now comes in to punt. He's averaging 21.3 on uh, 19 punts. And back in safety, Alvin Bailey. And still hasn't used a fair catch. He's the number one punt returner in the USFL Southern uh, Conference and the uh, Eastern Conference. 23 returns coming in tonight for an average of 45. Hasn't played that well tonight, so he's mishandled the ball a couple of times. Now Smigelski the punt from Virginia Tech. And Bailey will be waiting. He has the fair catch in disdain. Good high punt. Let's see if he goes to fair catch. Nope, he will not. He refuses, and he's hit down immediately at the 15-yard line. They might not have given him enough there. So, with 2.43 to go in the third period, it is... Hoynsey on first and 10. Hoynsey. His receiver fell down, incomplete. He was going Doug Bedoin was the man who had a chance to catch the ball, but Mike Harris just lost his footing downfield and fell. Well, Mike Harris, one of the two outside receivers, number 82, number 80, Mike Fisher bring in the plays from Dick Bielski there, who said, why did you have to fall down as Bedoin, the seven-year veteran, was coming across to make that play, but Owens, he gets pretty good protection. They're in excellent field position. They can score quickly here. There's still plenty of time in this football game. I well, was still in the third quarter. Over a minute to go. Second and ten for Hoynsey. Hoynsey drills it incomplete. Well, he's going that time for Harris on a comebacker, and Jeff George was right there covering. Thrown a little bit low. 56 seconds to go. I think we could correct the uh, statistic on Anderson. He did score two touchdowns, not one. Hoynsey's going to run it. Five for the first down, and he doesn't make it. Goes down about two yards short, and a penalty flag throw. If that's against Tampa Bay, it'll give Washington a first down. It could be Walter Carter. I believe. A late hit. I believe that it was a late hit. Yep. That's a first down for Washington. That keeps the Federals' hopes alive, and there's Walter Carter, 6'4", 250. Well, <laughs> Owens is yeah, trying yeah, to make a yeah. move. Personal Carter cannot use that defense. right arm Personal. and hit him as late as he did there. There was definitely a late hit on his part as James Harrell, the linebacker, was making the initial contact, but Carter, the tackle, chased him that far. He said, I want to get a piece of that young Mike Hoensey and through the L. First down now for Hoensey. Let's so and clap for the winning back. And they give it on the inside, and that could be Ricky Klatt's first uh, carry. Not at Bledsoe. Bledsoe makes the carry. Fred Nordgren on the stop for Tampa Bay. 33 seconds now, and the clock is running here. Could be the last play of the third period coming up. There's Bledsoe, 18 carries for 44 yards. After that great week, a week ago carrying the football, he's come up against a considerably tougher competition with that four-man front of the Tampa Bay Bandits. Well, you said it there. Tampa Bay defense has certainly established itself right now playing as well as most in the league. Here's a fake. Uh, play action points. He sacked. Taken down behind the line. Alonzo 
Johnson, the right side linebacker, number 58, was the man who collared him. Alonzo Johnson will come in from the right side. He's number 58. He has two and a half sacks. Bang. Untouched. Pow. Down goes Mike Hornsey. Never saw him coming. Well, he was a good uh, fellow to get out of the territory draft from Florida a and And we go to the fourth period coming up. Hornsey out of the pocket. And it'll be picked off. Intercepted down by Hanna. That's the fourth interception by Warren Hanna of Tampa Bay. And he is pulled down around the 22. Washington team's been hurt by big plays a lot this year. They haven't given up that much to sustain drives, and they were killed here tonight over field position with those three first quarter turnovers that handed Tampa Bay the ball in beautiful position, and Steve Spurrier's team responded, scoring each time. The guy you got a glimpse of besides Spurrier there was Jimmy Jordan, who's the third quarterback here for Tampa Bay, and he's not a bad one. He's still out nursing a little bit of a shoulder injury. Peace throws it into a crowd incomplete. Robert Cobb put a lot of heat that time on rookie Wayne Peace. Wilfred Morgan was the intended receiver with a lot of white jerseys up there too and Peace might have been forced if that one was not picked off. But Wilfred Morgan was running an inside move. Marvin Harvey, the tight end of that side, was running a flat pattern almost diagonally to the sidelines to open it up, but the heavy pressure on peace forced him to get rid of it quicker than he wanted to. Gillespie's down to the left and Brodsky's up the right. Brodsky's getting out of action here tonight. Here's Peace. Back up quarterback. Going to Gillespie. Tice has it at the 49 yard line. Mike Thurman was the guy there covering, but Gillespie, the little guy, had him beat. 5'9, 170, ran a perfect route. Well, he's got tremendous quickness as Peace going back. The blitz coming, 51 coming in with the stunts in there, jumping high in the air is 74, Robert Cobb. But Willie Gillespie, quick as a cat, running that sideline, makes the catch. Good throw by Peace. And good attendance here tonight. A perfect night for football. Temperatures around the low 70s right now, maybe 70. Wayne Peace, deep drop. Peace got a man open, and it's caught down there by Gillespie. And out of bounds he goes again. Two catches in a row by Willie Gillespie. Victor Jackson, the strong safety, had to go over to make that stop. And Peace has come out throwing here with great accuracy. Threw that ball very well, but Victor Jackson was too far off of Gillespie as he ran uh, kind of an inside move and then broke it to the sideline. Quick pitch back here and circling wide comes up. Running back Gary Anderson, I might guess, stops him after a game of about four or five. Ten and a half minutes to go from Tampa Stadium. Tampa Bay shooting for a share of second place. Here's Tampa Bay getting in scoring position again. And off out of the backfield, it's Wiggy Williams. And Williams goes to the 23, stopped by Ben Apuna. But if you were not with us at halftime, Following uh, printed reports that the Washington team may indeed be, be being sold right now to the Miami businessman Sherwood Weiss. We had the uh, owner, Burl Bernhardt, of the Washington uh, Federals with us at that time. He told us they had worked out a, an agreement, in, a, in fact, that the final papers had not yet been signed. but. That a sale indeed was in the works and probably would be affected by the start of next year. But that Washington would stay in Washington this year. Now whether it will be moved or not remains to be seen. Peace to the end zone and he is for Gillespie. Willie Gillespie gave an every ounce and look at Warren Peace. And kind of self reproach for throwing that one a little bit too far. Well, third and short, you'll see Willie reaching out for it just off his fingertips. And you, you know, you might say, well, if he'd have taken another step or two, he possibly could have settled under it like an outfielder chasing a fly ball. But with the quickness of Willie Gillespie, his decision was to dive. Unfortunately, Wayne P said, I couldn't have gotten them that wide open. Why did I miss it? And they're going for it on fourth down. All right, Wayne Peace has not uh, has thrown one touchdown pass this year. Fourth down play here for Tampa Bay. Peace on a bootleg. Does pull in body, and he's over the middle, and it is caught, but not for a first down. 
It's caught by the tight end Marvin Hardy, but I think it's going to be short of the first down markers, and the ball will go over to Washington. Well, let's see where they spot it. That could be important. Play action. Actually, it's a bootleg. Marvin Harvey will be in the left side of the screen. He came from right to left across shallow. Gets the hand up. Ball a little behind him. Great adjustment with the ball in the air. Excellent speed. Mentioned earlier, 9-7. He said, the only reason I got beat down in this area is Houston McTeer was the man of the times. But right there, he made a great play as far as he was concerned, but not enough. And there's Wayne Peace, who came close a couple of times. He had Gillespie down the end zone and overthrew him by half a stride. New quarterback in now. For Washington, Reggie Collier getting his first action here tonight. Play action face. Drills it hard and it's caught at the 34-yard line where they say now was trapped down there. Trapped by Mike Harris. A wide receiver. You know, one thing that's tough for a quarterback to come into a football game is Reggie Collier's statistics are, are splashed up, but you're over in the sidelines, the coach tells you to warm up, you're going to go in the football game, even though you get your arm loose. It isn't like getting in the actual combat of the football game. To come out throwing on first down, a little tough. You want to get the field first. Well, rumors, of course, persisting about Collier and the Dallas Cowboys and maybe some other teams. Collier again. Collier face. Now, he can run. Collier, short of the first down by a couple of yards. And that's one thing that, that he really has to develop. You'll see him as he drops back here. He doesn't really get that much pressure from number 75, Walter Carter, but he takes off. Now, he is an excellent runner. There's no doubt about it, but you got to stay in there and wait until the last moment before you do start to scramble. Well, Washington trails by 24 points. They need some long, big plays. Here's Cody. Collier looks to both sides, going to run again. Cotton. He has a first down and plenty more. Uh, he's up over the 40-yard line. It'll be a first down for Washington. So Collier doing better running the ball on musty plays than he is through the air. Warren and Clark on the ball. Well, it was effective as Collier goes back. Only a four-man rush. They're not going to put any pressure on. They're sitting back in the zone. But Collier, you can see, did not take the time to look around. Now he's pointing out his blocking. He took off with it. Gets a peel back on number 74 right there. That's Ron Simmons. And then Warren Hanna comes across to make the play. Nick Bilski looking on the sideline, seeing what his uh, young second-year player can do after the trade from Birmingham. Play action again by Collier. Now Collier's going to put it up. He's got a man there. Drop. That was intended down there for Billy Taylor out of the backfield. And it was perfectly thrown. No reason why that pass shouldn't have been completed. Really, that ball was right in there. Double coverage on the outside. He went right down the middle. I think he's taking just a little bit of a peek at that defensive man that's coming across. It looks like he's going to make the hit. That's 28, Doug Badoin. The seven-year veteran. Good throw by Collier right here. Really on the money. You see him kind of just take a slight peek. Maybe you can't see his eyes all the way, but his head wasn't really locked in and concentrating on that football. Uh, Collier again. Takes off. Got some room. Bay territory on the 47. Show what he can do. As down at the Tampa territory. Collier throws back to his left and he hits Walters. Out of bounds. It will not count. I don't think Walters held the ball anyway, but it was a great throw. It's tough moving to your left like that, throwing with the right hand, isn't it, Don? Really, and that was a pre-planned scramble. As Collier dropping straight back in the pocket, will qu quickly roll to his left. You're right on the screen. You see him pirouette at 360 all the way around. Now, the quick release. He spots him downfield, down to Walters. One thing Walters doesn't normally do is drop a football. He was so close to that sideline, I thought he was adjusting, and you can see Reggie saying, oh, man, I don't lay that many in there that good. Please hang on. <laughs> well, Walters was stretching out. Make sure he got both feet in bounds. That could have had something to do with it. Third down and 10 now for Collins. Here's Collins. Huffed it, and now he's wrapped up and taken down for a sack at midfield. Fred Nordgren, the right tackle. Three-year veteran from Portland State. Only 5'11", but he weighs 245. 
Well, maybe that's one reason that Reggie doesn't stay in the pocket. They've had a high incidence of sacks in this football team, but that's his first in instinct. Nordgren will be coming in, number 68, right there, gets his hands on him first, collapsed the left side of that line, and he has six hurries as well as two sacks, now three sacks for Fred Nordgren. Excellent quickness, good strength. Bench Steve's press is about 550 pounds, Jim. Yeah, yep, there's Steve Spurrier and Jimmy Jordan on the sidelines. He's got to be a satisfied man here oh, tonight. They're going to go for it. Fourth and 15. Fourth and 15. Connor. Connor puts it up. And he has got Waters for the first down to the 30 yard line. Oh, what a big play that was for Connor to keep Washington Drive alive. They seem to be out of the ball again. Great, great poise by Reggie Collier dropping back. And he does get excellent protection as they're sitting back in the zone. Walter's coming over the middle. Good concentration, turns up field. 56 takes a shot at him, misses him. That's Keith Clark. Doug Bedoyne gets a little piece, but good, good concentration and poise by Collier. And this is the thing that he has to develop. Look at him sit there and look. Good follow through, good arm up high when he throws. Locked in, first down. Big nine by Joey Walters, over 100 yards. Cotter, Cotter, but a hurry. Line side, and Cotter is down at the 37-yard line. Another big sack in there. Well, this one by Walter Carter. I'll tell you, I, I almost couldn't restrain myself. I could see Walter Carter coming all the way, and I wanted to say, get rid of it, Reggie. They're coming. They got you from that blind side, baby. And... Uh, Unfortunately, he couldn't hear my thoughts. It should be like the movies with the big music starting about that time. <laughs> oh, Something bad going to happen. Oh, oh. Five minutes, 15 seconds to go in the game. Had Tampa good, Bay, 37. Good, excuse me, Jimmy. Had the good protection last time. I maybe got overconfident. Yeah. There's Carter in trouble again. He's got a man open. It's caught down here. That is Bledsoe. And he's inside the 25, but short of a first down. We'll have a third down coming up again for Washington. But it'll be just short yards to go. Fred McAllister on the stop. Young rookie from Florida has played well tonight. For uh, Charlie Bailey and Steve Spurrier. Curtis Bledsoe started dancing around a little bit. If he'd have turned around and taken off with that, he'd have been very close if not having made that first down. I think you're right. Had his back to the defense and probably just thought there was someone bearing down on him. In actuality, he had about three yards uh, to work with. Collier again. Collier over the middle. Twelve Walters. Touchdown. Joey Walters for the touchdown, and Collier has done it. He took him right downfield and scored a very impressive drive for the young uh, fellow from southern Mississippi. He got a hand it to him. He engineered that drive, and he was the key man. And a great throw by him. As he goes downfield, double zone to the outside, great protection, post move by Walters coming in there. You can see is Warren Hanna, number 20. He's beaten on the left side of your screen, and then it's into the end zone for Joey Walters. But he came so wide open down the middle of that double zone, and that's the spot that's vulnerable, and that's the spot that Reggie Collier managed to pick up his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Well, let's see if they go for two here. Well, they're over there. Their average, they average 13 points a game coming into this one, and now they're in position to get either 20 or 21. Fifth touchdown by Joey Wallers. Fifth touchdown catch this year. Collier rolling. He's pointing. He fires the end zone, and it's broken up. Incomplete. He was trying to hit in there to, uh, I think, one of his running backs, Billy Taylor, maybe. There's Joey Walters from Clemson University, Canadian Football League, and receiver extraordinaire for Washington. Just got his fifth down onside kick, and Tampa Bay was waiting for it, and that was some play made down there by a lineman for, I think it was, that might have been Gillespie out there. It was. So Steve Spurrier knew what was coming. Don, he had the good hands there, didn't he? Yes, he did. They call it the hands team. You get all your best pl players uh, up with the good hands and Willie Gillespie sees number 56 Danny Triplett bearing down on him and quite a bit of a mismatch there but Gillespie put his neck tightened his headgear and took a lick and there's your buddy Dick Bielski his father was born in Bielsk Poland and so when he came to this country just added an eye to his hometown and the family name thus became Bielski and he went on to star at Maryland and this is his 20th year in coaching in pro football 
backfield to Ricky Williams. Williams stacked up around the 41-yard line. Curtis Bledsoe has been held down tonight after that record performance last week. The Tampa Bay defense just a little bit different. Maybe he should have been into the ball game earlier when they needed uh, his ability to scramble and throw the ball on the run. But Coach Bielski said, no, I'm going to stick with Hohensee and finally brought Collier in, got him six points. There's Ricky Williams. Now, it could have been a little bit different Tampa Bay defense, too, that he's facing. A little different attitude in the defensive team. you got a 37-19 lead. Maybe you don't play like you do when it's nothing-nothing. There's no doubt about it. Well, you know this Washington club, uh, they have traded four of their draft choices to the Los Angeles Express team that will be on Monday night. The Federals had only signed three of their future draft choices, so... You can see that they've given away some awfully good players. In that drive, Collier hit three out of seven for 59 yards. And the TD. Two and a half minutes to go. Tampa Bay just like to hold on the football here and move into second place time. Top piece going to go long for all of it. And it's incomplete. He had his man down there, Morgan, and he was in a foot race with defensive back Jeff Brown. The ball was pretty well thrown. Well, he might have made the tackle. Had that ball been laid out in front, it would have been six points. On the other hand, good play by Brown to get his hand in there. All right, here's an update now. The other game being played tonight in USFL. Arizona, San Antonio. Arizona's come back to tie it. They were down 14 zip, and now it's 14-14. Johnson on the pass from Risher. 25 yards has tied it for George Allen's team. Position punting away and a fair catch is called for and taken at the 17 or 18 yard line. That's where Washington will have it with 214 to go. We'll be right back here with a score. Tampa Bay Bandits. It will be a good series. Carter out of the backfield hits his man and it's uh, going to be down his tracks on the 22. That's Billy Taylor out of the backfield. Warren had on the stop. So Carter took his team 80 yards. Let's see if he can take them 83 with a minute 40 to go. Now here, a little screen over here on the right side, and running hard is uh, Taylor Hall Bledsoe, and he has a first down over the 30. They'll play Tampa Bay here. Next Saturday night, you'll see it on the ESPN. Now here, scrounding out of the pocket, hits his man incomplete. Incomplete, it was caught, but he came down out of bounds, being uh, Greg Taylor, number 83. Well, Greg Taylor didn't use that sideline drill that they start in training camp, the little toe tapper to keep inbounds. He jumped up in the air for the ball, didn't really have to, but that momentum took him out of bounds. And Steve Spur, you know, has had a lot of changes with his club when he finished at 11 and 7 a year ago, 1983. Massive player turnover. 30 players who had started at least one game, all gone. A lot of new faces. You mentioned Greg Taylor. You know, at Virginia, he was a running back, so they made a wide receiver out of him here. Good pressure by Mike Butler. So, Hagley's getting a chance here on this uh, series. Reggie Collier did his job, and now they're looking at Lou Hagley, first-year player from Notre Dame. Well, Mike Butler leads the Tampa Bay Bandits, the Bandit Ball Club, with six sacks. Hagley fires up field, and it's caught up here by short man Billy T Taylor out of the backfield. Fred McAllister on the stop. Now we have less than a minute to go, 55 seconds. Three uh, timeouts. I don't know why they don't take one. Well, they got three left. Well, of course, they're trailing 37-19. John Reeves, that's been an interesting story, hasn't it? His life... Uh, Certainly has. Came back from some bad times. Wonderful. Now he's back to the good times. Collier's back in. Here's Collier scrambling out of the pocket. Collier stays in bounds, and he is buried at the 39. In bounds, and the clock continues to run, and Washington calls a, another of its timeouts. Well, let's thank our statistician, Mike Shields, tonight, and our two spotters, Kenneth Belcher for Washington and Joe Mannion for Tampa Bay. We'll be back here. Tampa Bay leads $35,000 in a tax adjustment program by drawing tickets out of the hat and giving it to fans in the crowd. They had Uncle Sam out there represented, making those calls, and 
Very interesting. They do a magnificent job here in Tampa. Well, I kept thinking and hoping they might draw my name. I could use a little help there. I, I, I would like to, too. They, uh, you had to be sitting in one of those seats. I thought seriously about running down and grabbing one. Hope I got lucky. Bernard West. Going out, he was shaking up a little bit. Three-year veteran. He said it's been a long evening. This banded ball, they've kind of taken us apart. They're going to let it run down. The game is going to be over right here. And there'll be no further snaps in this game. So three first period turnovers by Washington. Converted into three Tampa Bay touchdowns. Got them off to a great start. 21-0 and Steve Spurrier's team had easy sailing the rest of the way as they get victory number seven, moving into a second-place tie in the Southern Division, tied up with New Orleans. So, again, for Don Heinrich, this is Jim Thacker saying so long from here. There's the final score, 37-19 Tampa Bay.